if you are one of the Kevolution, which if you only do the vlog and you're not here from the main gaming channel, means that you support the channels on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Lelujo, then firstly, thank you very much. We don't talk about that enough on this channel. You don't get enough thanks, but that Patreon money goes towards both channels. And this month, it's specifically helping this channel because it's allowed me to purchase my new toy, which might not seem like much. It's a new Gorilla tripod. Um, I have one of these at the moment, which is like that size. I should have brought it out here with me, which is to stand my phone on so I can do time lapses when I'm out and about. This one, big enough to put the actual proper vlogging camera on. If you watch Casey Neistat, and if you don't, you should, but if you do watch him or any other, all of the vloggers who will copy him because he's the best, then you'll know that this is what he recommends, to stick your camera on and then sort of hold out in front of you like that. And it means, as well as getting the benefits of a selfie stick, so you don't have that massively zoomed in face like that, which you get whenever I'm out and about doing a vlog. Um, it also means that when you want to just stand it down somewhere, you can just open the tripod out like that, or you can wrap it around a tree by bending it all up like that. It's basically an incredibly versatile bit of kit. It's awesome, and it was paid for by the people involved in the Patreon, so thank you very much. The vlog will definitely be getting better as a direct result of you folks getting involved at patreon.com slash Lelujo. So thank you very much for your support. So, as announced on social media earlier on today, this is going to be another Q&A episode. If you didn't get a chance to get a question in, that means you're not involved in social media. So you need to head over to facebook.com slash FM or twitter.com slash Whenever we do a Q&A, it's announced on both of those and you get your opportunity to get your questions in on there. So, without further ado, let's get this week's Q&A underway. And the first question comes in from Scotty Walden, who wants to know which pilgrims are better, Boston or Plymouth? And do you know, it hadn't occurred to me that they were both called the Pilgrims. Um, obviously, I knew Boston were the Pilgrims because I have a long affiliation with Boston United Football Club through previous saves and spent a lot of time in Boston, as you've seen from yesterday's vlog. I was in Boston just yesterday. But I'm now Plymouth Argyle manager in my current football manager save over on the gaming channel. And it, I'd seen the name come up, but I just hadn't made that association in my mind. So which one of the two is better? I guess it depends which world you're living in. Because as the current Plymouth manager, if I'm living in the non-league to legend world, then obviously Plymouth are better. They're the team that currently employ me. They pay me more money than Boston ever did. We're playing at a higher level than Boston ever did. And I'm enjoying it more than I ever enjoyed being at Boston. There's no Dale Southwell spoiling it for everybody. But in real life, I've never been to Plymouth. And I, Boston's all right. You can't, you can't get a cup, decent cup of coffee there. You can't park unless you carry coins like a old person you need a coin purse to park your car in Boston but you know I, I quite like Boston it's all right uh, I've got to say Plymouth but I'm really enjoying the Plymouth save I know we're only five episodes into Plymouth over on the gaming channel but I am enjoying it a lot so for now we've got to say Plymouth that is subject to change though depending on if the board of Plymouth Argyle 10 years into the future decide to mess me around at any point Next question is from Nikki Wilson, who wants to know, being realistic, what car would I like to replace the Skoda with? Um, I'm really not a car guy. Be <laughs> being realistic, I guess, if, the, if that car exploded tomorrow and I had to go out and buy a new one, I quite like the idea of getting a Kia of some kind because of the seven year warranty. I think I'd probably want a new car. I've never bought a new car. I used to have, I've had a couple of new cars as company cars um, when I used to have a real job. And I think you notice the difference, not just in the fact that they smell different and they drive better, but also they don't break down as much. You've seen just in six weeks of this vlog the amount of trouble I have with my car. The The battery just decided to destroy itself. The oil is leaking all the time. I've, I have to fill up the oil at least once every couple of weeks. So it's not like a constant drip, but it's going somewhere and I don't know where it's going. And it's just, it costs an absolute fortune in repairs. And I never remember that being the case with the new company cars that I have. It might just be the fact that they got properly serviced every six months. Whereas I always go for the cheapest option and tell the man to get spare parts off of the junkyard if he can. Because I just, I really resent having to spend so much money on cars. They, I, they just don't interest me. If there was a way for me to just click my fingers and be where I wanted to go, I would happily not have cars exist. It's one of the things that appeals to me most about living in a city at some point in my life. It's why I really want to do that. Because when I'm down in London or when I'm over in Nottingham, 
being able to jump on the tram or jump on the, the underground, it's just so much easier. And I would much, much rather live within walking distance of a train or tram or underground station and have everywhere that I would ever want to go somewhere on that network of public transport, but not buses. I'm not doing buses. Buses are horrible. I want proper runs every three or four minutes, convenient, quick public transport, and then I wouldn't need a car at all. So that would be preference number one. Preference number two, though, some, something with a good warranty, which is why the Kia appeals to me. It needs to be big enough to fit five people in plus a dog so you're looking at something quite big i don't know what any of them are called um someone told me a voxel astra would be good for me i'd probably just be happy with a newer skoda octavia just a newer version of the car that i've got it's plenty of room for all five of us plus dave to fit in that so uh, i bottom line i just don't care it's only a car and they just bore me to tears and aside from my house and tax probably it must be it, it must be the third biggest expense that i have at the end of each year is paying for a car that all it really does is allow me to get to work so that i can pay for it because all the other places i go in it we could just as easily get a bus or a train or whatever it might be that wouldn't be convenient for getting to work there is no direct public transport that gets me to where I work so I need a car to get there it's too far for me to walk or cycle because I'm lazy and unfit and it's like six miles away but so I, I basically am paying out thousands of pounds a year in petrol and tax and insurance and maintenance and repairs to be able to go to and from work so that I can afford to pay for the car repairs and that is a really frustrating situation for, for me to be in as someone who doesn't get any pleasure or enjoyment at all out of owning a car. Pixel Junkie wants to know if I could do a collab with any YouTuber, who would I use and who would I choose and why who would I use? Oh, Freudian slip there. I think I've done collaborations with just about everybody who was on my hit list. Um, I don't think I've specifically done a collaboration with Work the Space, but I've certainly spoken to him a number of times, so we must have done a video together. I just really don't remember doing it. Someone check the gaming channel. Have I done a video of Work the Space at some point? And if not, when, how, and what? I spoke to him on One True Nerds channel. That's how I've had a go. But I've spoken to him outside of that as well. I'm sure I have. So that would be quite a cool one. Do a draft or something with him at some point. But everyone else who was on my list of people I wanted to collaborate with when I started out has been done now, I think. At looking outside of Football Manager and my tight little community of, of really nerdy people who, I mean, it's fun doing the collaborations, but we don't get a lot out of them other than a little bit of crossover between our audiences, which is fine. That's what they're for. That's the purpose of it. But I guess being looking at it purely from a expansionist point of view, if I could choose any YouTuber to do a collaboration with and why, I'd choose someone like PewDiePie because he's in the news at the moment for various controversies. If I just turned up on his channel tomorrow doing a video with him, by bedtime I'd have 3 million subscribers. It would be brilliant. There you go, purely for selfish reasons. I want to collaborate with the biggest YouTubers out there. I want to do it on their channel. None of this them showing up on my channel nonsense because people don't come over for that. I've made that mistake with some of the collaborations I've done before. We should, I, when I'm Because I'm a nerd and I enjoy the analytics. I've got far more... And we're talking like maybe 2,000 subscribers the day Work the Space made me his manager of the month. And I didn't even appear on his channel. He just mentioned my name and told people to go and subscribe to my channel. That earned me about 2,000 subscribers. When I had Dr. Benji appear on my channel for a draft, and he's been on the channel two or three times now, there's not really been a spike in subscribers from that. So either that means there's a really tight crossover between our subscribers, but he just happens to have four times as many as me, or there's not really any massive benefit in having people come on my channel. What I actually need to do is get my name and ideally face and personality and whatever else on their channels. So yeah, give me the biggest, most watched YouTubers you can find. Give me two minutes on their channel and a link back to my own and that will make my channels explode. So yeah, I'll have it for that reason, please. Not for any not for any other, not, no, not for any kind of creative or, or, or artistic reason. I'm just, I just want the numbers, thank you. Craig Hadley wants to know who is my favorite wrestler of all time. I think it re it shows when I've watched wrestling and when I haven't because I've been very much on and off over the years. And I watched in the late 80s, early 90s, really, I was really into wrestling then, but then drifted away 
for most of the 90s, completely missed out on the Monday Night Wars, it reappeared around about the time of the invasion, and because I didn't know anything about WCW, and didn't know anything about what had been going on during the Attitude Era or any of that stuff, I thought it was the best storyline they could ever possibly come up with. It hooked me back in for a good two or three years. So that was brilliant. But then I drifted away again, and I've only really got back into it over the last couple of years, probably. So for me, there were, I mean, there were the wrestlers I liked as a kid, but they're not really, none of them really come into the equation. But the big standout star of the two times as an adult that I've been into watching wrestling it'd have to be Chris Jericho. He was he was the man when I watched wrestling around when I was really into it off the back of the invasion when he when he won beat both champions in the same night to become the undisputed champion. It was just brilliant. He gives the best promo in the history of wrestling. He's fantastic in the ring even now at what 45 or whatever he is now. He's still the best wrestler on raw week in week out. He's just, he's just brilliant. So, yeah, it has to be Chris Jericho. I don't know if he's been consistently brilliant for that full 15, 20-year period. I have no idea what he was like in WCW. I've seen what his introduction to WWE was like. It looked like it was great. I wasn't around for that. He was already established in WWE by the time I was watching. I know he's had his spells away over the years, but I wasn't around for them either, and he's been pretty consistently there and one of the top guys whenever I've been watching on a regular basis. So, uh, Danny Slingsby wants to know, do I get to many posh games and who is my favourite ex-manager? I'll do that in reverse order. My favourite ex-manager is Darren Ferguson. I think he's the best manager in the history of the football club for both of his spells with us. He has just been outstanding. I was around when Chris Turner was manager in the early 90s. He was excellent as well, got us back-to-back -back promotions, but he, he wasn't around long enough for me, and obviously I didn't know him as a player back in the 70s when he was a hero and captain and went on to manage and then own the club, and it was all great. But for me, I was very young when he was manager, and we got those back-to-back -back promotions in the early 90s, and by the time I was going regularly, he'd already, he'd already moved off upstairs. His assistant manager, Lil Fuchillo, had taken over, and it had all started going a bit downhill. So I never really had that. I never really saw the best of him, I don't think, as a regular attendee of games. So if you take him out of the equation, then there's a whole load of trash that came after him. Barry Fry for far too long, who I just can't stand because he nearly put us out of business. And then some pretty terrible managers and Darren Ferguson. So it's pretty simple to come to the conclusion that, that Fergie was the best that we've had. Um, he secured his three promotions across five years managing the club. Uh, you can't really argue with that. And certainly when he came back, turned us from being a pretty terrible mid-table team into a team that stormed up to the playoffs and provided me with the finest seven minutes of football I'll ever experience at Old Trafford in the playoff final. The, it, football just won't top that ever for me. With regard to the question, do I get to many posh games? Not so much these days. I was a season ticket holder for 20 plus years. I gave that up a few years back. I gradually each season attended fewer and fewer games. It's a combination of a few factors why I don't really go very much at all anymore. I find the cost prohibitive. I would rather, if if you handed me £500 now, which is roughly what a season ticket costs as a, as a full grown adult. I used to buy them when I was a student and that was okay, but as an adult, it's always stung a bit. If you handed me £500 now, there'd be 20 things I'd spend that on before I even thought about the possibility of buying a season ticket. So a season ticket just doesn't come into the equation for me. It's really, really difficult to justify shelling out 25 to £30 pounds for me to go to a match just on a whim. And especially if the kids want to go as well, you're looking at it being 60 or £70. Pounds once uh, um, it just It's so expensive. And again, if you gave me £50 pounds now and said... Right, here you go, you've got £50, it's got to be gone by the end of Saturday afternoon. What do you do? Then, I don't know, I'd, I'd rather go and buy a game or take, take the family out for dinner or, I don't know, buy £50 worth of comic books. I'd get more longer lasting enjoyment out of that than I would sitting in the cold, surrounded by, putting it really bluntly, a majority of idiots who don't understand football just shout offensive abuse constantly are so often wrong 
about what's going on on the pitch. It frustrates me no end sitting at a football match, hearing fans irrationally hate players who are good and love the players who are a bit rubbish, but because they try hard, oh yeah, try hard. No, just, I want quality. And uh, no, the more I think about it, the more I'm, I, I, I listen to the games on the radio, I follow along on Twitter, I watch the goals on YouTube, I'll watch us when we're live on TV. I will almost certainly never have a season ticket again. I don't think. And I mean, for the last three seasons, probably the only games I've gone to have been weeks when my brother's not been able to go. So I've borrowed his season ticket and it hasn't cost me anything. I don't think I would spend £25, £30 on a regular ticket for a match at London Road just for a normal league game. I just can't see myself ever wanting to do that again. I'll go to playoff finals and cup finals and big games. I didn't bother going when we were away at Chelsea. I just, I don't know. I think, I've, I think I'm think i too much of a nerd to enjoy that whole atmosphere. We've talked about it before, about why I don't do coaching and why I'm not interested in playing. And it's not just because I'm rubbish and unfit. There's a lot about the atmosphere and the the environment that football is played in that I really don't like. So because of that, I stay away more often than not. And the final question for this week is from Ben DPD, who wants to know, um, apart from him, of course, currently who inspires me to do better on YouTube? I think I've moved past the point that, so if you've asked me that a year ago, it would have been all of the other Football Manager YouTubers. I used to watch them religiously. I would watch everyone every day. I'd just soak it all in and learn from it. But... So I think probably since FM17 came out, maybe for a month or two prior to that, I don't watch any football manager on YouTube anymore. At all. I, <laughs> I watched the first couple of minutes of Dr Benji's new series just to see what he was up to with his, with his alter ego, just because people said it was good, and it was. But as soon as it got to football manager -y, I stopped, because I feel like I know how to do that now. And I don't want to watch other people because I don't want to do it their way. I, when I first started out, everything was stolen. It was all I was taking little bits from everybody, and just cut, right. How do I do this? How do I do this? But then once I got enough of that input from other people, I then mushed it all together and started to develop my own style out of it, which is still growing, still improving. But from now on, it needs to be organic and my style that emerges. So because of that, I don't want to see that Ben or Jack or Loki Doki or anyone else are doing something better than I am. Because if the, if they are, and I know they are, there will, there'll be stuff that all of those people are doing better than I am, and there'll be stuff that I'm doing better than they are. But I don't want to know what they're doing better than me. And I certainly don't want to know how they're doing it. Because what are my choices then? If, if Say if one of them is doing um, live comms better than I am. I have two choices. I either accept that and accept that they're better than me at that part of it, or I'd start doing it their way. And then I'm just copying them. And I think I've moved on the copying of moved on from copying other people. So I need to just evolve and do it my own way now. And subs are growing, views are growing, it's obviously going okay. So that side of things, I think from a gaming point of view, I'm pretty much sorted. So my focus for the last three or four months now has been I just watch a lot of vloggers. I think, I think I've mentioned before, maybe even yesterday, day before, I watched every single episode of Casey Neistat's vlog over the Christmas holidays. That's like 450 videos. I watched all of them. Um, but I also watched a whole load of other vloggers as well. I watched all of the big English ones that you'd, you'd know about, the likes of Alfie Days, and, and uh, I watched a bit of Zoella just to see what she was doing. Didn't enjoy it, but I watched it. Um, I watched Roman Atwood, and um, oh, I'm trying to list them off now. I didn't like very many of them, but I still go out and find new ones now. And I've watched a lot of the family vloggers, so the, the Shaytards, there's the Irish couple in London whose names are, are completely escaped me, but I've watched a bit of theirs. I'm just watching vlogs. I, and what I do most days when I turn YouTube on is 
I look for vlogs, look for people I haven't seen before and see how they vlog. Because I'm trying to go through that same process that I went through with gaming. I'm trying to do that with vlogging now because I know I'm not any good at vlogging at the moment. This, not a good vlog. This is rubbish. This is me talking into a camera. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. I'm sat in front of a green screen. It's too long. I know all that, but I don't know how to be better yet. So I'm still learning, learning, learning. It'll get to the point where I've learned, not learned enough, because you've never learned enough, but I've learned enough through that method to then be able to stop watching them and then start learning in a different way, learning from my own experiences and mistakes. And I'm not there yet, but that's who I'm watching to try and improve where I am on YouTube. And then there's the people that I watch just for entertainment. Um, Good Mythical Morning is one of the best things, is one of the best entertainment shows on any media, not just on the internet, not just on YouTube. It's just excellent. So I watch that every day. Um, Anna introduced me to that and it's brilliant. I, I'm wearing Rhett's beard oil now from Good Mythical Morning. I've got a Good, Good Mythical Morning cup somewhere. Um, what Culture Wrestling I think is just superb. Um, I watch that every single day as well. I, I'll watch anything um, that King Ross or Adam Blompier do. The rest of them I can take or leave, but those two I think are absolutely superb, even if it gets a little bit sweary at times. And aside from that, I don't watch a lot else. I think they're probably my two that I watch religiously for entertainment purposes and everything else is watching to learn. I'm watching a lot of video influencers, video influencers and video creators just to learn about more about YouTube. Just in general, that's where I learned a lot of the SEO stuff and a lot of the stuff like um, specific editing techniques and stuff like that. So I watch a lot of that. Not because I necessarily want to emulate those kind of people, but because it's just a good way for me to learn what they're doing. So, I watch a lot more YouTube than I thought. Two years ago, I didn't watch any YouTube at all. Wasn't interested in the medium at all. I was a podcast man through and through. Listened to 30 podcasts a week. Didn't ever watch any YouTube. Didn't see the point of it. And it's changed so much in the last two years. It's mad. And now I don't listen to any podcasts at all, really, apart from the complete guide to everything. How things have changed. And that whole thing is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. How I need to get better at vlogging. Because that, as a and a went on too long. I mean, what are we, 15, 20 minutes now? I'm going to do some serious cuts on that, hopefully, and get that down to something a little bit more manageable. But thank you very much to everybody who sent in their questions. I think we did manage to get through them all this time round, so that's a bit of a bonus. We won't do another Q&A for a few weeks now, give you a chance to build up your questions that you want to ask for next time. But as I mentioned at the start of the video, if you do have a burning question that you feel the need to ask me, get following me on Facebook and on Twitter. All the links are down in the description and I will let you know on the day when the next Q&A is going to be. So keep your eye out for that and you can just submit your questions through either of those mediums. 